What's going on guys? It's Daniel from Coin Spots here. And oh boy did I miss uh, some of the big news uh, yesterday with Bitcoin going up to uh, 17, 18,000. You know, on the Korean exchanges it passed 20,000. We had a pretty crazy run up yesterday. Um, if, if any of you guys were looking at um, the order books, especially on GDAX and a lot of other exchanges, they just they couldn't handle it. And GDAX was down yesterday for a little bit. They had some server issues and stuff, but whew, this, is, this is some pretty crazy stuff. Um, as to why the run-up happened, that's, that's anybody's guess. <laughs> I mean, we do have... Um, Bitcoin futures coming out this Sunday, actually, on the 10th. Um, and then a week later, uh, or a week and a day later, on the 18th, we have the next set of futures um, coming out. So that could be uh, a reason. Uh, I'm going to be talking more in depth about the, um, the futures at the end of this video, uh, simply because we are, you know, almost, almost at that time. We're just pretty much two days away until until futures officially launch. Um, but currently, you know, we're seeing a little, you know, consolidation up here, kind of like we saw down here. Um, it could be cooling down for another run-up, um, but who knows, really. You know, we've just been, you know, churning past these, these um, big even levels, you know, like 13,000, 14,000, 15,000, Simply because if you looked on the order books, there's really no selling resistance here, right? I remember back when we were at, um, or almost at 10,000, so, you know, 9,900-ish, you know, there was a huge sell wall at 10,000 of like 60 plus Bitcoin, probably more, but then after 10,000, there pretty much wasn't anything. That's why once we broke 10,000, we pretty much just skyrocketed from there. And that's pretty much the same case here. You know, there, there isn't too much selling resistance that is going, or that is keeping, you know, Bitcoin's price down so much. I mean, obviously, when we had the huge run up yesterday to, to almost 20,000, a lot of sellers definitely stepped in. But as the price is just consolidating now around 14, 15,000, it's, it's not really going anywhere, I don't think. Um, and, you know, really what I was looking at is if this is really the market top, um, that's definitely tough to say uh, because no one can, can really predict, you know, when a market top is. You know, you might get lucky and and call it but um as i said it's really anyone's guess and or i mean at least one thing you can look at is volume um volume is is, is one of the big indicators to, to see if if a market has reached its peak so if we are seeing a lot of these red candles really long red candles um accompanied with huge uh, spikes in volume that is one potential uh, indicator for a top. So obviously it doesn't always happen like perfectly that way. Um, but large spikes in volume is something that you're going to be wanting to look for uh, if you think that um, the market top has been has been reached. I know on the on the daily, you know, we've you know turned down on the RSI. It peaked all the way pretty much at the top at you know 95. But that still really doesn't give us anything because, you know, we've peaked back here. Um, this was in, oh, no, yeah, the, these are um, actually, yeah, huh. We have, I mean, who knows? <laughs> um, RSI could be telling us something here, but Bitcoin, the Bitcoin futures is uh, going to be the biggest thing that uh, we're going to want to be looking at coming up. Um, because that's the biggest piece of news that can influence Bitcoin's price. Uh, now, looking at a couple other altcoins, um, EOS was one of them. 
I was taking a look at EOS. I was talking about EOS in the last uh, video on how we had the new update, uh, I believe it was Dawn, uh, right on schedule, which was good, and how EOS was basically trying to bridge the gap between you know crypto and um, or the crypto uh, interface and decentralized apps. You know, so you didn't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to be able to use it. And I think, uh, especially now, EOS is, is kind of revitalizing. You know, they're, they're not launching their, um, their chain until, I believe, June of 2018. So there's still, a, you know, a good amount of time to get in. I totally missed this run up here. Um, because EOS was pretty much dying ever since the ICO. Uh, but I, I did put up a little fib retracement here, and we went uh, pretty much down to the 50% um, level. Um, and now we're just kind of hanging around here, consolidating. Uh, broke broke through the channel, um, but now we're we're trying to you know get right back above the channel. So I'd say you know wait a little bit more uh, for EOS to uh, to pull back because we had a, a crazy run up. <laughs> From the bottom here, 50 cents all the way to for like four or five bucks, so it's almost a 400% run up. But EOS is definitely one that um, I'm going to be looking for in the long term. Um, you know, I'm probably going to be doing uh, some you know coin reviews, uh, at least coins that I am personally invested in. Um, I'm you know actively looking for a good uh, position to buy into EOS. But definitely a coin you should um, keep on your radar. Um, another one is actually Stellar Lumens. Uh, I have a, yeah, here's a chart. Um, Stellar Lumens simply because they've announced some, uh, some pretty big partnerships with IBM and a ton of other companies. Um, they're, they're doing big things out here now, Stellar Lumens. Um, and they're honestly looking a lot, a lot better than Ripple. Ripple has just not been able to uh, to break the um, downtrend that it's been on for four or five months now, which is pretty pretty crazy. Um, but Stellar, you know, recently we jo we just saw it go up like a hundred some percent. Uh, it's having a little cool down now, but definitely a project um, you want to keep your eyes on, I'd say. So yeah, now moving on to some of the news. And this one was interesting. Um, Steam dropping Bitcoin as a payment. Um, now, some people were citing this as uh, saying that Bitcoin adoption is is going backwards, and um, or Bitcoin adoption is going backwards while the price is you know continuing to go up. And I mean, I think that. Bitcoin, uh, the perspective of Bitcoin and what we define Bitcoin as has pretty much changed. Um, Bitcoin is, is now more of a store of value than an actual transaction medium, um, simply because we have options like Litecoin and Dash that are significantly better than Bitcoin. Now, that's not to bash Bitcoin, it's just that Bitcoin is... Its, its use case is now different than maybe what it was intended for. Uh, because the whole scaling debate, I, don't, I honestly don't think that Bitcoin will ever reach the, the low fees that Litecoin or Dash has and fast transaction times. And that's perfectly fine. Because since I think more and more people are viewing Bitcoin as the whole concept of digital gold, it really doesn't matter that companies are dropping Bitcoin as a payment method. It's, it's not like that many companies use it anyway, or at least major companies, right? Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think that it's that big of, of news against Bitcoin per se. Um, you know, because considering that about, I think it was like 0.5% of all transactions on the Bitcoin network are, um, 
are used for you know some type of um, consumer purchase uh, and the rest of them are just buying or people buying Bitcoin to purchase altcoins or moving it between exchanges or wallets and you know over the past year we really haven't seen a, a spike in the amount of Bitcoin transactions used for commerce and I think that ju that just shows that Bitcoin isn't really going to be adopted as a um, transaction medium because when you have projects like Litecoin and Dash who have marketing teams that are actively um, trying to push their their product, right? Because at the end of the day, um, cryptocurrency or, or tokens are really companies, right? Dash is, even though the, the blockchain is decentralized, Dash is still a, a company itself. They have marketing teams, they have a CEO, right? Same thing with Litecoin. And, and that's something that Bitcoin really doesn't have. So I think it's, it's, it's totally fine that stuff like this is happening. And hopefully they switch over to something like Litecoin or Dash that is a much more optimal uh, solution in terms of uh, payments. So moving on to... The Bitcoin futures. Um, this was a, a nice little article uh, published on uh, CoinDesk. Uh, this in, in conjunction with um, Carter Thomas's tweet. Uh, so Carter Thomas is, if you don't know, the guy who runs Coin Mastery on YouTube. Um, so he was basically saying that this whole Bitcoin run up, or at least the pump that we had uh, yesterday, was all by institutions who would hold hold Bitcoin now and then take out futures contracts, uh, shorting Bitcoin pretty much, and then obviously make money on that because they'd be selling the Bitcoin they accumulated now to make money on their futures contracts and then purchase Bitcoin back and kind of rinse and repeat the process. And I, I, I think this is a, a good... Um, interpretation of what could happen obviously no one knows for sure but this is something to to keep your um your mind thinking like institutions are out there to to make money and they will manipulate things any way they want to um to make a profit and even though we do want institutional money in bitcoin i think that a lot of people, or uh, not people, but a lot of in institutional investors still are pretty skeptical about Bitcoin because of the whole concept of it as it it's decentralized and it threatens, you know, regular fiat currency. So they probably just think of it as a money-making opportunity that they can manipulate because even though futures markets aren't regulated or futures markets are regulated, the Bitcoin exchanges aren't right. So getting into that, um, I should actually briefly mention, you know, the way futures contracts work are basically you're committing to, um, pay a certain price for Bitcoin, whether you're longing Bitcoin or shorting Bitcoin, right? So, if you're longing Bitcoin, you're saying, oh, you know, in five months, I think that the Bitcoin price is going to be at, um, let's say, 30000 And you're going to take out a contract, a futures contract, where you're going to pay 25000 for Bitcoin in five months. But you think that Bitcoin is going to be 30000 So obviously, you'd be making the difference off of that. And the same thing goes with shorting it. And that's basically what, um, what Carter here was, was mentioning, right? They're buying a Bitcoin now. They're going to take uh, short futures contracts shorting Bitcoin, saying, Bit you know, in X amount of time, I think Bitcoin is going to be 10000 And with all that Bitcoin they accumulated, they're going to sell it off, and it's going to reach 10000 Their futures contracts are going to be fulfilled, and then they could just buy back into it. Um, 
and I think that's that's something interesting to consider, um, especially because everybody thinks that, you know, this um, futures news is something good for Bitcoin. Oh boy, what just happened? I think I went back. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, and another thing to note is um, that futures markets are actually bigger than the commodity itself. So for example, gold, uh, the futures market for gold is much, much higher than the actual market cap for gold. And the same thing is going to happen with Bitcoin, right? Because you're not actually using that commodity to pay off the futures contracts. You're not even touching Bitcoin at all when taking out a futures contract. Because it's all, even though the futures contract is based on the Bitcoin price, you're getting paid in cash, right? So that means that the futures market is going to be worth so much more than the market cap of Bitcoin. So you don't even need to buy Bitcoin to be, to basically speculate on it. And that that honestly is is very interesting because the way futures markets are going to be impacting the Bitcoin price is really just by the sentiment of the futures contracts, right? That might sound, uh, I probably worded that really uh, weird, but if a ton of people come out with futures contracts shorting Bitcoin, even though those futures contracts aren't using Bitcoin to pay them, the, the sentiment of everybody shorting Bitcoin is going to drive the price down, right? I, uh, if, if you remember, I, I, in a previous um, segment, I was talking about market reflexivity and how when everybody um, says the price is going to hit X amount, people are going to buy into it say, or until it reaches that amount. Same thing with fear. If, if, if people see that all the headlines or that are like institutions are shorting Bitcoin, that's going to drive the price down as well. And really the fact that you don't need to actually buy Bitcoin to speculate on it and be part of the futures market is in a way, it's, in, it's interesting to consider that because that means you don't actually need to purchase Bitcoin, Right. And if you like, why would you go through the hassle of like opening up a wallet and, you know, learning all that jazz, even, even though it's probably simple for like me or anybody else who's in the crypto space, like for someone who's just getting into it, all they have to do is go buy futures. They don't actually have to hold any Bitcoin, right? So that would, that's most definitely going to have an effect on the price. Um... So, you know, those are just a few things to consider as, as we're going into, um, into uh, Bitcoin futures in the next two days. Um, pretty exciting stuff. Or scary, <laughs> depending on how you want to look at it. Um, you know, as to what I'm doing, I'm pretty much just going to be holding what I already have. Uh, there's really no sense in, in trying to predict what's going to happen. Um, simply because it's really just a guess. <laughs> uh, I think it's better to react to the markets than, than try to predict them. So, you know, pretty much what I'm going to be doing is just when, when the futures launch on Sunday, I'm just going to be watching the order books and watching the charts um, to see what's going on with Bitcoin. And also, you know, monitoring the, uh, the forums and telegram groups I'm part of. Um, see what everybody thinks about it, right? Because as I always say in my videos, at the end of the day, it's, it's people who are, are buying cryptocurrency and people's emotions are what's really going to drive the market. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to wrap up the segment for today. Um, as I said, I'm still... Um, kind of adjusting and, you know, seeing what schedule works best for me. 
Um, I'm thinking about doing a, a couple of um, coin reviews, so you know, specifically Walton, Stellar, and you know, other coins that um, I am personally invested in and I think have a really good project. Um, you know, those would be the coins that I'd, I'd review on, on, on my channel, uh, simply because I think there's value in them and, and they solve, you know, real world problems, real world problems. Um, but yeah, you know, more stuff to come on this channel. Um, hope you guys are excited. Um, you know, please like the video, subscribe, and, uh, I'll see you guys next time.